It's time to look at an early outlook for the 2025-2026 season. And ultimately, Syracuse is going to need to have a deep recruiting class because, spoiler alert, they're going to have a lot of roster spots available. There are five players that have no more years of eligibility after this coming season. So this is it. One and done for these players. Eddie Lampkin, Jair Davis, Jaquan Carlos, Lucas Taylor, and Naheem McLeod. So every transfer they brought in for this season, plus Naheem McLeod, no matter what, they are out the door after this season. They have no more years of eligibility left after this year. So that's already five spots that you are going to have to fill that is without anyone leaving the program after next season. That's without anyone leaving. You're already going to have to fill five spots. Here are some players who have eligibility beyond next season. Okay, so at least two more years left with the with the school if they decide to choose to stay for those years. It's six, okay? J.J. Starling, Chris Bell, Chance Westry, Kyle Cuff, Donnie Freeman, and Elijah Moore. Those six players can play for Syracuse for at least the next two years, if not longer. They have more years of eligibility. If none of them leave, and I imagine that at least a couple are probably going to leave. Donnie Freeman is a one-and-done caliber prospect, and you have to expect at least one or two of these guys to transfer. I mean, it's just the new day and age in college sports. A lot of players enter the transfer portal. But let's say none of them leave. Let's say they're all back. Even if they're all back, which is a huge if, the Orange will still have nine scholarships available to use. Nine of them. And that's because the NCAA just increased the amount of scholarships a men's basketball team can have. It used to be 13. Now it is 15. So if all six return, if all six of those players return, J.J. Starling, Chris Bell, Chance Westry, Kyle Cuff, Donnie Freeman, Elijah Moore, Syracuse will still have nine scholarships available for 2025-26. So the roster is already going to look significantly different, and they already have the space that they're going to need a deep recruiting class to just fill it up. They need it, right? They have nine available if nobody leaves. It's bound to be a deep class because they have to get a deep class. Now, this is... On topic, but for those that maybe are concerned about NIL funding, right? I know that's a big thing, big topic. Obviously, money is king, right? Keep in mind that Syracuse is going to Vegas for 2025-26. And the reason why that's significant is because the program is going to get a million extra dollars just for going to Vegas. They're going to get a million dollars in addition for their NIL funding. That essentially means that they can have the same budget that they had for this coming season. So I'm just going to throw out a number. I don't actually know the number, but let's say their NIL budget for 2024-25 was $2 million. Okay, let's just say it was $2 million. Just a thought exercise. In 2025-26, they can have that same budget of $2 million, but they are also going to get an additional million just for going to Vegas, which means... It would be $3 million in that case. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to increase it themselves. They are already getting it from Vegas. And if they happen to just win the tournament, that's another million that they would get in NIL funding. But let's just they let's say they don't win in Vegas. They at least get a million dollars for showing up. So they are gonna have significantly more NIL funding to be able to fill out the roster. I think they did a good job, honestly, of filling out the roster for next season. I think it's much deeper than previous years. But the point being is that because they have nine scholarship spots at minimum that are going to be available for 2025-26, they're going to have to have a deep recruiting class because they got to fill those spots somehow. Even if they don't use all nine of those available spots, let's say they use seven, you need at least three of them to probably be high school recruits and then you go into the transfer portal. So when you look 
at the roster outlook for 2025-26, they are bound to have a deep recruiting class. Once again, three reasons why I believe Syracuse basketball will have an extensive 2025 recruiting class for basketball. Number one, the final lists update and the players that Syracuse is still very much in the running for. Number two, the offer to commit ratio. And number three, the amount of roster spots that will be available for 2025-26. It's nine of them, and that's if nobody decides to leave after next season. And that is highly unlikely. 